What's up YouTube, I'm Guy. Today on the channel we're going to be checking out the Manta Ocean King. Now, several months ago I reviewed the Manta Triumph, which is a relatively simple sports watch. It's a time-only watch. It's what I would describe as perhaps a field watch. Ever since that video, the requests to review this dive watch, the Manta Ocean King, have been coming in and in. Well, today is finally the day. Before we get started, a big thanks to the folks over at Manta. They sent this watch over on loan for review. It's getting sent back. I guess technically by the time you see this video, it's already been sent back. Nevertheless, I do appreciate it very much that they have in the past and continue to offer to let me borrow their watches to do videos here on the Just Bluefish channel. Big thanks to the guys over at Manta for sending this watch in for me to borrow for a few days. We're going to dive over to the tabletop, take a look at this watch, I'm going to tell you what I think about it, and then come back over here for some of my final thoughts. So stick around for the whole video. Alright guys, here we have it, the Manta Ocean King. Of course this is the date version on the stainless steel bracelet, as you can see here. This is a fantastic watch. I was extremely impressed when I got it in from Manta to borrow for review and I was unboxing it. It is an excellent watch with a few really outstanding features. And of course I'll go over the specific features that I think really make this watch shine throughout the course of my review. But suffice to say, the short answer is yes, I am quite impressed with this watch. I really do like it. Before we go into all of the specific details about the things that I really like about this watch though, we're going to go over the basic specifications first. Now, first things first, let's touch on the price point of this watch. In this configuration, with the date on the bracelet, $1,925 is the price as listed on the Manta website. That is expensive. It is a lot of money. It's going to keep it well out of reach for a vast number of people that watch my videos, of you guys out there, and for people in general. I get that. It is expensive. People are going to ask me, is it worth the money? Does the quality match the price of this watch? I do think that it is an outstanding watch. The quality is superb. It probably would be worth the money. I think I would describe it that way. But of course, I do wish it was cheaper. I always say that about pretty much every watch. I wish the watch would come in a little bit more affordably. And uh, yeah, I feel that way about this watch too. It would be great if it came in, I don't know, a few hundred dollars cheaper. Maybe that $1,500 price point. That would get me really super excited. But at about $2,000, I don't think that it's a terrible value either. Like I said, I always wish watches are a little bit cheaper. So the basic specs on this guy, we have an overall case diameter of about 41 millimeters, a lug width where the bracelet attaches to the case of 20 millimeters, an overall thickness actually only 12 and a half millimeters. It's a pretty thin watch for a diver, especially a 300 meter water resistant diver, and a lug to lug length or uh, an overall wingspan from one edge of the case to the other of 48 millimeters, which is just about a perfect size for a, a dive watch like this. Overall, the, the dimensions, the proportions of this watch are outstanding. It is sized perfectly. It's gonna be very friendly to most wrist sizes. On my six and three quarter inch wrist, I think it wears great. I think you could pull it off on a slightly smaller wrist, and you could certainly wear this on a larger wrist. Overall, size and proportions, excellent. Very well executed. Now, of course, we have a 316L stainless steel case with great finishing. Fit and finish on the case is excellent, and I'll look at that in more detail here shortly, as well as a stainless steel bracelet. And the bracelet is one of the high points for me on this watch. We have a sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside, and the AR coating works great. Uh, I get a very nice legible look at that dial, even with bright light. There's not a ton of really harsh glare. Uh, what else do we have? 300 meters of water resistance, a screw down crown, of course, a ceramic bezel, a fully loomed ceramic bezel, but it is only a 60 click bezel. We'll talk about that more shortly. Now this is run by a Salida SW300 movement. According to their website, of course it's a 25 joule movement, 42 hours of power reserve, but the interesting specification about the movement that they list online is that it is regulated to plus or minus 5 seconds per day. That is outstanding. I'll throw this on my time grapher and bring in a video or a shot of this watch running on my time grapher and yeah it runs quite well i am very impressed with the accuracy that this watch is putting out considering it's not an actual cosc certified watch 
still extremely accurate. People do knock the Salida movements. They are, of course, clones of the ETA movements. The SW300 is not a clone of the basic ETA 2824-2. It's a clone of the slightly higher end model. Uh, and in, uh, I guess, that perspective, this is a slightly higher end model than, say, the Salida SW200. Considering how well regulated it is and what I have uh, had vis-a-vis uh, -vis experience with other Salida-based watches, I'm perfectly happy with this movement. Uh, yeah, some people are going to complain. They're going to say, why isn't it a re real ETA? For me, that's really not a factor. It doesn't matter. This is a no-holes case. There are no uh, perforations in the lugs. Uh, I think it would be cool, although it might detract from the kind of, um, uh, not dressy, this isn't a dressy watch, but really nice kind of refined look if it had holes. Despite that, I like a diver, which is sort of a sports watch. To have holes in the lugs when possible makes it easier to take the bracelet off and to switch it out. Nevertheless, this is a no-holes case, but it's a very nicely done case. High polished on the sides, brushed on the top, the brushing and the polishing is all excellent. We have very nice bezel <laughs> bezels, I almost said. Of course, bevels along the edge of the uh, lug profile. It looks really good. Overall, the fit and finish of this case is yeah, nothing short of excellent. I'm very pleased with it. I think that the crown side of the case is done equally well. The shape of the crown guards, it's not oversized, which is nice, but I still find the crown, which is a signed crown, you can see the uh, Manta logo there, a little bit, uh, not difficult to operate, uh, but uh, difficult to like get my fingers on. It's mostly to do with the traction of the crown. It's not super, super aggressive, but not really a big deal. It still functions well. Unscrewing it isn't hard. As you can see, I'm getting it unscrewed there without any problems. Now, once it's out into the first position, this is, of course, a hand wind movement. We can wind it up as needed, pull it out to the first position to quick set our date, second position to hack the movement, and set the time. Pretty standard stuff. But yeah, overall, quality and fit and finish of the case, very, very nice, impressive, not not a real problem with the crown, but I do like a little bit more of an aggressive texture on the knurling of the crown, if I could have it, but again, not bad. Moving on from the case, let's talk about the bezel and bezel assembly. Uh, texturing on the bezel edge, it's good. Again, not aggressive. Um, like uh, a similar uh, critique of the crown that I had. It could be a little sharper, but it's functional. It, it's not an issue. I just like a really, I like to really feel it bite into my fingers when I'm working on a bezel or a crown. Anything that might come off as being a little bit tight. And because of the somewhat passive knurling or texture edge of the bezel, it does feel a little bit uh, snugger than it probably does need to be. The action though is good, very crisp, clean clicks. Now as we said in the earlier part or the intro of this video, it's only a 60 click unidirectional bezel. I don't have a problem with 60 click bezels. I know some people complain that 60 clicks is not precise enough, they'd prefer a 120. I, I can go either way on it. I think that a bezel action being nice and positive, not any back play, this has almost no back play, is much more important than having a 60 versus 120 click bezel. The insert is uh, ceramic and it's fully loomed. I'm gonna bring in a loom shot. You'll see the loom of the bezel as well as the face of the watch. It's BGW9, excellent, excellent loom. Very impressed with it. I think that, uh, I've said it before in the past, but I'm not a big loom guy. I don't read my watches in the dark too terribly often, but it is always cool to just charge your watch up and look at it glow. And uh, yeah, this one does deliver. One tiny nitpick that I have with the bezel is the fives, the numerals, the five on the 15 and the 45. You can see that they're sort of italicized, whereas the rest of the numerals aren't. Uh, it's not something that you really notice, but you know, I really, really drill into and analyze and uh, really go over with a fine tooth comb every single little detail when it comes to my watches and watch reviews. And I would say that given the option, I would prefer that the fives not be italicized. It doesn't match up 100% perfectly with the other numbers, in my opinion. Uh, and that's just, you know, subjective personal taste. Some people are going to like it. Um, it's not terrible, but uh, I would prefer a more standard straight up and down, not slanted five on the bezel numerals, the fives anyway. Moving on from the bezel, we have this beautiful dial, applied markers, 
Excellent, excellent dial. Manta branding up at the top side. Ocean King, 1,000 feet, 300 meters down at the bottom. Just below that, a really nicely framed date window. And of course, Swiss made on the edge of the seconds or and or minutes track. The handset is high polished stainless steel, also loom filled, just like the dial and the bezel, and uh, sort of of a sword style on the hour, and uh, kind of a, I don't know, more of a pencil style on the minute hand. Excellent presentation, very legible, very usable, looks clean, looks classic, it looks the way a dive watch should, without being the sort of ubiquitous copy of a Rolex Submariner style dial. It's unique, it does look like its own sort of presentation. But it's familiar enough that it doesn't seem too out there. It's not something that you're gonna look at and go, it's too funky, you know, some watches do that. This is just clean and classic and straightforward. The little hint of red on the Ocean King text down on the six o'clock side is a nice way to sort of set it off and make it not just a simple monochromatic black and white presentation. They really knocked that out of the park with this dial, in my opinion. One of my favorite highlight features about this watch is the bracelet and the clasp. Let's start at the end links. First of all, we have pivoting end links. Normally, well not normally, but quite often we'll have an end link with a uh, elongated T-shape uh, single piece end link, right? But this is um, sort of a U-shaped uh, pivoting or hinged end link. I like this classic look that it just, it gives the watch sort of, I don't know, a little bit of uh, like a, a classic nostalgia, I guess, for older style watches. That was a much more common feature, maybe, you know, up to the last 10 to 20 years anyway. I really do like that presentation. I find it really appealing. I think it was a smart choice for the designers to go with this style end link. Now, the links themselves Sort of an oyster style with a nice heavy taper, but something interesting is normally an oyster bracelet would pivot right there, right? But these also have a second pivot or articulation point, making this a really comfortable bracelet on the wrist. It folds and wraps and falls and or lays on the wrist absolutely perfectly. Now, of course, this is a uh, screwed Lynx bracelet. So with your uh, standard, um, I think it's 1.6 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken, screwdriver, you can resize this bracelet, no problem. The Lynx are also relatively low profile. It's not a big, thick fat. And when you, fat link, I guess I should say. And when you feel it in the hand, you immediately notice that it is a slim, slender, link um, uh, presentation, I guess, for lack of a better word. Not in a bad way. It doesn't make it feel cheap or, or low quality. It feels really good. It feels sleek. And again, on the wrist, it just lays and wears absolutely perfectly. Moving on from the links themselves, we have this clasp. Now, this is a long clasp. And uh, there's a good explanation for that. But before we talk about that, the overall thickness, it's a low profile clasp, which I really like. Finishing is very, very nicely done. Brushed and polished surfaces alternating. We have the Monta logo on the fold over safety latch. Pop that fold over open. And then we have uh, just a friction lock clasp. It, it friction locks a little bit differently than uh, some others though, where the lock would be here and the lip of the on the clasp, that would be typically how they work. But this has a little nub right there, and that nub interfaces in on the swing arm at this point right here. The friction lockup is quite good, so I have no problems with it. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the outstanding shining star moment on this clasp is of course, the easy, easy to adjust uh, glide lock style or like system. Similar to what you might find on a Rolex Submariner, on the underside of the clasp, you have this little lifting la latch, latch or lever, yeah, latch, I'll go with latch. And then you can slide this portion back and forth and you can get uh, several millimeters, probably, I don't know, somewhere between six and 10, it would be my guess, of toolless quick adjustability. So if it's a little bit warmer, you can put it out a few notches. If it's a little bit cooler, you can bring it in a few notches, lock it back up, and uh, yeah, be about your business. I think every watch should come with a clasp like this. I'm super happy that they went the extra mile and incorporated something like that on this clasp. The entire bracelet is a highlight for me with this watch, and this uh, quick adjust 
Glide lock style clasp is no exception. On the wrist, the watch is just super comfortable. It's a pleasure to wear, mainly because of that bracelet, but also because of the dimensions. The overall thickness being relatively slender at 12 and a half, lug to lug of 48. Everything about the watch is perfectly thought out of when we're looking at it in the terms of comfort on the wrist. Even the edges of the bracelet feel like they're nicely beveled, even on the inside, so you don't get a sharp, crisp edge biting into your skin. Everything was really thought out well on this watch, and I can appreciate the level of attention to detail that went into it. And that's why I said early on in this video that I don't think that this is too expensive for what you're getting. I think, you know, for a watch, I wish it was cheaper, again, because I wish all watches were cheaper so I could buy more of them. But I am super impressed with pretty much everything about this watch. So, the way it wears on the wrist, the overall comfort, size, size and scale, it is all done really, really well. All right, guys, well, that's my look at the Manta Ocean King. Uh, if you'd like to stick with me for a few more minutes, I'm gonna jump back over to the studio view, close this video out with some of my final thoughts. All right, guys, there you have it. There is my presentation of the Manta Ocean King. What do I think? What are my final thoughts, my conclusions, and all the rest of it? Well, first things first, obviously, as I'm sure you could tell based on what I said about this watch on the tabletop, I do really like it a lot. I think it is outstanding. The fit, the finish, the overall quality is excellent. The bracelet and a few other features, the clasp, a couple of things about this watch really do stand out. There is a ton to love about it. Really my only negative is probably the price point. $1,925, approaching that $2,000 price point is expensive. Do I think it's too expensive? No, not necessarily. Like I said, you're getting a ton of high quality watch for your money. But as always, I wish that a watch could be a little cheaper. I say that at the entry level all the way up to the luxury level. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up for today. Thanks for tuning in, and a big thanks to Manta for lending me this watch for the review video. I greatly appreciate it. As always, if you'd like to help support me, help support the Just Blue Fish channel, and you like what I'm doing here, click in the description of this and every video that I do, there's a list of ways that you can help me out. First of all, following me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram would be a great help. I also have a link to my um, Facebook group. That's what the word I'm looking for. Uh, if you'd like to join the Just Blue Fish Watch Club on Facebook, I highly encourage you to come on over there and join up. We've got probably somewhere in the ballpark of 1,300 members over there sharing pictures, talking about watches, asking for advice, help, tip, you know, whatever. Everything going on over there is excellent. Everyone's really, really nice. Nice. So I do recommend you come over to the Just Blue Fish Watch Club and join up. If you'd like to help support me financially, first of all, you know, there's a link to my PayPal if you'd like to send me a donation. Or if you want to join my Patreon, that would be awesome too. There's a link to Patreon down below. And a big thanks to the guys that have been supporting me on Patreon month in and month out. Greatly appreciate that as well. Finally, there is a link to my Amazon affiliate account down below. If you want to buy something that I've reviewed, or maybe anything else for that matter, click on my Amazon affiliate link first, and you'll just get shot over to the Amazon homepage, do your shopping like normal. I get a small commission for each and every single transaction that goes through my Amazon affiliate link. A lot of you guys have been using it. I greatly appreciate that. Keep it up. It does add up, and it means a lot to me that you guys care enough to click that link before you go ahead and buy something that I reviewed. All right, well, that's going to do this one for today. So until the next one, I'll sign off and say bye now.